living in. Now, I uh, was sitting next to uh, Brother Charlie Jameson last week. And Charlie's a good guy. I love him to death. Good pastor friend of mine. And uh, we try to feature his sermons every now and then on Bible Truth Radio. And uh, is there something on my nose? Because, I mean, that just feels like something's on my nose. But anyway, Charlie made a statement that I, I, I think he's, it made sense to me. You know, for years, Russia and China hated the United States of America wanted to take it over and you have to think about it look at the resources that this country has we have oil we have gas we have coal we have farmlands we have i mean we have everything we have everything in this country they knew that dropping nuclear bombs over america was probably the worst thing in the world to do because although you may conquer the nation you're not going to get anything out of it so, the individual, and I think Khrushchev actually said something like this. We're not going to bomb America. We're going to let America bomb itself. And that's what they're doing. Now, this article just came in, and it comes from Alex Jones, and I don't trust Alex Jones. Um, but anyway, let's uh, maybe do a little research on it. And I'm just going to read this as a plausible scenario. FEMA signs deal with Russian Emergency Situations Ministry to exchange experts. As part of a deal signed last week in, in D.C. between the Russian Emergency Situations Ministry and FEMA, Russian officials will provide security at mass events in the United States, a scenario that won't sit well with Americans wary of foreign assets operating on U.S. soil. According to a press release by the Ministry of the Russian Federation for Civil Defense, U.S. and Russian officials met June 25th. Um, let's see, in addition to agreeing with FEMA to exchange experts during joint rescue operations and major disasters, the Russian Emergency Situations Ministry will also be providing security at mass events in the United States. This suggests that events designated as national special security events by the Department of Homeland Insecurity, which include the Super Bowl, international summits such as the G8 and presidential inaugurations will now rely partly on Russian authorities to provide security. And we were, whoa, we were crazy back in the 90s when people were surmising that foreign troops in this country would be used to police this land. We were crazy. You wild-eyed conspiracy theorists. You're crazy. It's not going to happen. I think it is. I think it's going to happen. I think God, because of our sin, is going to destroy the American sovereignty over this land and give it to our enemies. That is exactly what I think is going to happen. According to the word, O oh God, that's what I think is going to happen. And uh, maybe we can, uh, maybe some of our astute online viewers who are really good at investigating things can check into that to see just how true that uh, that story is again i just don't i don't trust out of alex jones or anything that comes out of him i just don't do it um let's uh let's do a little rehashing here shall we let's uh let's go back into the um the video the watchman video broadcast we made uh the last couple weeks dealing with the prism program it and one of the things that jumped out at me um, in looking at the logo for PRISM um, was this, this rainbow effect and the symbolism of it. Why did they choose this, uh, this particular anagram? Why did they, you know, why this logo and so on? And I, and I feel like, still, I did then and I still do feel like it was, uh, it was symbolic. It was significant. It was like setting something up. It's kind of like, kind of like a company naming itself Proteus and they, they're designing chips that are going to build godlike human beings. I think that is I think there's a connection there. So I was, you know, looking at this idea 
of the connection between the rainbow. We know the rainbow, of course, is an image in the Bible of the Lord Jesus Christ and a token and a sign of his coming. And I want you to think in those terms. So when you see uh, in the occult realm, uh, secret societies et al., it's not, it wouldn't be a promise then of Christ because they don't want him. It would be a promise of the coming or the birthing uh, in, the, in the travailing days, the birthing of the Antichrist, the revelation. Paul talked about it, Second Thessalonians. Right now he's concealed. He's concealed. Uh, uh, Jim Cedric asked me last night, and he sent me a text late last night. He was reading Revelation 13 about the mark. And he said, hey, Augie, tell me who that is. Tell me what that mark is. And I said, Jim, I've been studying that thing all my life, and I don't exactly quite know what it is or who that guy is. Not yet. And I believe Second Thessalonians 2. I believe that he's not been revealed Yet, I believe he's been concealed. And so anything that's concealed, they, there's always symbolism, there's always uh, types, there's always uh, logos and all of this stuff. And so you see, when, when you see this rainbow imagery, it is, a, it is sort of a, a symbolic of the coming of the Antichrist. Let me give you an example. The rainbow girls of Freemasonry. Um... You just if you look at the symbolism here, you have the you have the colors of the rainbow, uh, which would you know give you the idea that this is a this is something that has to do with the advent of the beast, the antichrist, the triangle, which is a representation of the triple helix, the the two handshakes together, one is coming from the left, one is coming from the right. Uh, it's a, you can recognize it as a Masonic grip, and um, it basically it, it basically spells out the union of two things joining together to create the rainbow. In other words, to to bring forth the birth uh, of the Antichrist. Uh, if you know anything about Freemasonry back in the 1900s, early 1900s, they had a magazine called New Age. And it was a Masonic Freemasonry magazine. That's where the term New Age came to, or New Age, came from. And so here you have in the New Age movement, um, you have the idea of the rainbow. The rainbow represents the seventh heaven, or um, the serpent has climbed up all the way through the seven chakras of your body, and now you receive illumination, or the, 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 the beast has been conceived and now born. Think of the language that James used. Lust, when it is conceived, bringeth forth sin. Sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Bringeth forth. That is a birthing term. Literally giving birth to death, who I believe is like a, a picture of the Antichrist. And if you look in Masonic logos, you'll see coffins and skeletons and everything else in the world, dead things. And it's, I think it's a picture of the Antichrist. But then here is what is uh, what became very very interesting was that I had noted and knew that the sodomites used a six colored um, rainbow in their logo. As I take a sip here, um, Alicia went and bought me. I'm gonna, my mind just runs all over the place. These little things that you squirt in your water. To make them taste good, and uh, this one tastes like pineapple and coconut. I like it. So anyway, back to the sodomites and the rainbow, and what I'm in, and so I, I use this in the video uh, to show you that there's a connection. I talked a little bit about it, and I'm going to kind of keep going with that. Uh, there was an article here. Let me get rid of uh, this graphic here. The talk show Hell Hates. Rainbow flag raised at Syracuse City Hall to celebrate gay pride. So it is definitely, I mean, and these, and these flags were flying all over the nation when the Supreme Court came out with that decision that they have overturned a bill in Congress that they deemed unconstitutional that the Defense of Marriage Act disqualifies or takes away the rights 
of two men to kiss each other, each other on the mouth after they put a ring on their finger. And by the way, this is, and I know there's the spiritual aspect of this, and we talk about this a lot, but there's another aspect of this that also rings true in the Scripture. The Bible says the love of money is what? The root of all evil. Do you know what this really is about? It's about money. It's not about letting sodomites do what they want to do. They already do. Sodomites do whatever they want to do, whenever they want to do it, and wherever they want to do it. They don't need a law. They don't need a ring on their finger. They're doing it anyway. It's about money. It's about getting money. It's about this guy and, and you know, this, this sodomite. And he's pulling down $150,000 a year in a high-end job at some huge corporation. And he's working his way up the ladder probably because he knows people. He's making a ton of money. And his bum partner lives with him and feeds off of him and he wants I want health insurance and I want this and I want his pension and I want that I, basically it's about money getting each other's money and the government and then they're going to get tax credits and tax breaks and all this stuff and it's all about money which is the root of all evil or the love of money is the root of all evil and the idea well, let me uh, let me let me get another picture here I actually I don't know if I incorporated this or not and I have to find it I sent this to myself uh, where is it Hogman here we go here's what got me going I'm gonna read an article uh, that was at the uh, I think it was yeah KMOV's website KMOV is the uh, CBS station here in the St. Louis area the article says building sport Buildings, sport, gay pride colors in anticipation of Pride Fest in St. Louis. Now, the the um, the Sodomite Carnival was held this weekend in uh, St. Louis, good old St. Lou. Um, and so, let me let me read the article. St. Louis is joining the ranks of other big cities to support the LGBT. Large bacon and tomato. That's what it would mean to me. An LGBT is a large bacon and tomato sandwich. Boy, I love that. The LG, the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgendered, messed up in the head people, community with new light treatments that is costing one alderman several thousand dollars. Now I read this and I'm going, why isn't city alderman spending his own money on on this? Well. He wasn't. He was spending my money on this. The St. Louis Civil Courts Building. Does that ring a bell with anybody? I'm going to show you what it is in a minute. The St. Louis Civil Courts Building is sporting gay pride colors for the first time in a move to show support for the gay community for the upcoming Pride Fest. And, I, you know, just in mentioning the Pride Fest, I want you to think of a verse in the Bible that tells you what is the inevitable happening when pride shows up. Just pride goeth before 